Before we get started, I'd like to thank Videoblocks.com for sponsoring this video. Videoblocks is an awesome resource for high quality stock footage, motion backgrounds, and templates for After Effects. Easily build a motion graphics logo for YouTube, your website, or business with one of their many After Effects templates. If you're looking for audio and music, check out their sister site, Audioblocks.com, for a massive library of music, sound effects, and loops. And lastly, if you're looking for stock photos and illustrations, check out their other sister site, graphicstock.com. All three sites offer both a monthly and yearly subscription with unlimited downloads and royalty-free licensing. Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 9 of my Pop Rock mixing series in Logic Pro 10. Today what we're going to do is we are going to mix the last three instruments into our mix before we start working on the vocals in the next video. The last three instruments we have are a synth pad, a synth lead, and the guitar solo. So let me go ahead and unhide those. I'm going to hit H to rehide all the vocals up there. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And let's start uh, right at the beginning here with our uh, lead synth. Now this is like sort of like the main little synth riff that's at the uh, the beginning of the song. It looks pretty level, so we probably don't need any compression, but there is some EQ uh, that we need to do to it. So let's just listen to it by itself. Now, I don't know if you guys can hear that on smaller speakers, but on bigger speakers and on headphones, you're, uh, you're probably hearing there's a little bit of like a low end rumble in it. It was just one of the effects that I used on it. And it's awfully bright too. It's kind of piercing. I want it to be bright, but sort of uh, rolled off in the high end. So let's start by throwing the uh, channel EQ on here. Whoops. And let me go ahead and use my shortcut that I showed in the last video. Double click on the EQ display and it pulls up the channel EQ automatically. Um, I'm going to roll out the low end quite a bit. Let me turn the analyzer on. Pulling out the low end is going to get rid of that low end rumble from that effect I added. And pulling out the high end is going to get rid of that shrieky shrill sound that we're hearing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go under imaging and we're going to add a plugin called Stereo Spread. Now Stereo Spread basically splits up uh, your frequency range and then pans those different uh, bands, a split bands either to the left or to the right channel. So this basically spreads out the signal from a frequency uh, perspective. Now the only problem with this plugin is it can sometimes uh, cause phase issues um, with our sort of mono compatibility. So what I'm going to do is on my stereo out, I'm going to go to metering and throw the correlation meter on here. And what this essentially does is it shows us the correlation of phase between the left and the right channel. Um, now, if this is in the, in the middle or higher up toward one, you're okay. If it's lower than zero, that means that your left and right channels are out of phase. So without the plugin, let's see what it, uh, what it looks like. So it looks like we're good. Now let's turn on the, uh, the stereo spread. So now we're out of phase. So this is bad because you don't want your left and right channels to be out of phase with each other because if you happen to listen to this in mono, that means that this instrument can actually disappear in the mix. The left and the right channel can cancel each other out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose um, just a preset up here. I'll use the, let's try the medium, mid, and high frequency spread. I'm going to pull the order up. That's the number of bands that it splits it into. Now, basically, this is there's a lower intensity and there is an upper intensity. And that basically just um, basically you can go in the negative as well to sort of uh, flip them around. Um, upper uh, and lower intensity is just basically how much spread you have in the upper and lower frequencies. So here's without it. So that's um, that's just the stereo spread. It's just a mild uh, frequency spread. The last thing I'm going to do for the lead synth is I'm going to add some reverb. So I'm going to go under Reverb, Space Designer, 
And normally with reverb, I add reverb to aux uh, channels and then bus over, uh, use a send to bus over to those. But with synthesizers, I get pretty liberal with, with reverb because I consider the reverb part of the, the sound design of the instrument. So in a lot of cases with synthesizers, I'll throw the reverb right on the synth channel. But for other instruments like vocals and guitars and drums, I'll, I'll choose to put it on an aux track instead. And we'll eventually get to that in a future video. So... For this synth, um, I'm going to use a, a large space, and I believe it's under plates, and it's called Shimmering Plate. Now, if you want to just hear the reverb signal, you can pull this dry slider all the way down and pull the reverb up, and you'll just hear the reverb signal, just the wet signal. And then to blend the two together, you pull the dry up and pull the reverb down a bit. Now, I like the, I actually like the echo, I like the, the actual sound that we're getting, but it's just a little too bright for my taste. One of the things you can do in Space Designers, you can actually lower the sample rate of the wet signal, which if you lower the sample rate, you lower your frequency range. So we can divide, um, we can basically divide the frequency range in half, into a quarter, into an eighth. And so the further down this goes, the darker the reverb's gonna get. This is actually a really cool function that comes from the hardware world because it, it sort of originates in digital hardware uh, reverb units and on those reverb units, like the Lexicon uh, PCM units, you could uh, lower the sample rate of the reverb to give it like sort of a warmer, uh, the reverb a warmer tone so it wasn't so bright and, and shrill sounding. So let me put, just pull the dry signal down, pull the reverb up, Let's go, I'm gonna to toggle from original to half to quarter to eighth and you'll see uh, what it sounds like. So once we get down to an eighth, it just starts to sound, sound gargled, so we don't want that. Let's go with a half. Um, let's pull the reverb down a bit and pull the dry signal up and let's see what that sounds like. Cool, I like that. All right, so that's the lead synth. Let's just see what that sounds like with uh, all the instruments in the mix. I'm probably gonna have to pull the, the volume down a bit. Cool. So let's move over to the synth pad. The synth pad is not a, an overly present instrument in the mix. It's very simple. It's very low. Uh, let me pull the volume up just a bit so you can hear it. It's basically just in the bridge, the chorus, um, and the guitar solo. And it's it sounds okay. It's just sort of like a texture in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do with it is I'm actually going to copy over um, the EQ, the stereo spread, and the space designer from the uh, the lead synth. Although with the channel EQ, we're not going to have the uh, the low pass filter in there. And I'm actually going to use the uh, high shelf here to actually boost the high end uh, just a little bit to make the high end just be a little bit more present. Just to give it a little bit more air. Um, I'm also gonna move the space designer down one slot. And I'm going to put a, another plug in here called the Tremolo plug, and it's under modulation. Now, before I get into, into this, just, let's just listen to this for a second. And uh, I'll put this on just a loop right here. You can hear that the synth sort of pulses. I just want it to pulse a little bit more, and I want it to pulse on the upbeats, sort of like a, a pumping effect, something you you do like with side chain compression on like a bass or something, but just like just a little bit, not a whole lot. So what I'm going to do with the tremolo plugin is what it lets us do is it lets us create tremolo, which is essentially uh, when you uh, pulse the volume, or basically um, like in the synthesizer world, you as would assign like an LFO to volume and make the volume pulsate. So the tremolo um, can do cool things like, like I'll go to slow panning here. 
can make the you know it can make the synth sort of move back and forth between the speakers, which is cool. But that's not really what we we want. We want both speakers to pulse in motion. We won't don't want one speaker to be low while the other one's high. So one of the things you can control is the phase of the right and left channel here. So you'll see that the left channel is at uh, zero and the right is at uh, negative 180. So let's pull this over or pull it up rather so that they're in phase. Now any, probably an easier way to do is just grab it right here and you can pull the two in phase. So zero and zero. Now the top one actually controls both channels, believe it or not. So when we're um, at zero degrees here, you can hear both channels pulse at the same time. But the rate is kind of slow. I want this to be more like a wah, ah, 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 a little faster. So let's try like a half note. The smoothing is just basically how ramped uh, the motion is. You can have it like be not smoothed on or at all, just be like sort of like an on and off. And the depth is how much of the pulsation you're actually getting. So I don't want at 100%, but I want a little bit, little bit, uh, uh, pretty deep, a pretty deep uh, modulation, but not like too, not too soft. All right, that's cool. Let's uh, hear what this sounds like with everything else in the mix. Okay, so you can hear that it's actually on the downbeat. I want it on the offbeat. So let's offset both of these by negative um, 180. So I'm gonna t just type in negative 180. Let's see what that sounds like. So another thing I played with was, was the uh, symmetry here, which basically just plays with uh, the left and the right side of the pulsation of the tremolo. So just pulled it forward just so the note is a little bit closer to the offbeat and really truly sounds like sort of like that uh, stereotypical side chain pumping sound. Now, it's a lot of work considering that this synth is going to be so low in the mix anyway, because it's going to be probably down here more than anything. It's one of those things where it's so low in the mix that you barely hear it, but as soon as you mute it, you recognize that it's gone. So it's just more or less filling in a texture. Um, to further complicate things, there are a few spots in the mix where I do not want to have that pulsing sound. I want it to just stay where it's at and... Uh, Basically, it's before the choruses, before the guitar solo, and before this last chorus here, um, and, and also actually after the chorus as well. So there's some spots where we want to shut off the tremolo. Now, the way we can do that is we can use automation to bypass the tremolo. So let's listen to just this one little spot here, and, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So like right here during this break, I just want this note to ju just sort of tail off. I don't want to hear the pulsing anymore. I'll pull the volume back up just so we can hear it in the mix better. So to do this with automation, you just hit A, pulls up your automation on the track. Uh, make sure that your track automation is on. Um, you can just click right there and make sure this is on track, not region. Um, I'm also going to um, go up to volume here, which is our standard automation parameter. Um, go up to main and go to insert three bypass. So this means you can bypass the third insert on the channel strip. So I'll choose insert three bypass. I'm gonna go over to the snap mode, change it to beat. Make sure that my marquee tool is selected. Drag over the range that I want to bypass, then click on the bottom and pull up. So right here, the uh, plugin's on, right here, the plugin's on, but right here, the plugin's off, and you can see that it, that it changes. So let me just solo that out just so you can see it.
And there's a little bit of pulsation in the original recording, but that's fine. It, it's not going to come out as heavily um, during these breaks. So uh, now this right here is uh, just a mistake. We're going to come back and take that out. Um, so from here to here, right before the, the synth break, I want it to be bypassed. All right, so off screen, what I did was I created four more additional bypass points. Uh, all of them except for the last one are all two bars long. So again, they're at the end of the bridge, the end of the first chorus, the end of the second bridge, the end of the second chorus, the end of the guitar solo. And then at the very, very end, I also created one uh, just uh, at the very end because I didn't want the synth to continue pulsing on the very last note. Now, one last thing we need to do with the synth pad is there's an erroneous uh, edit here. So I'm just going to basically just use my marquee tool to pull that out. Just create a little fade here just in case there's a little bit of tail left in there. Um, it looks kind of like there's a little bit of floor noise in here as well. So we will uh, pull all that out and then we'll just uh, create a little fade here as well just in case there's any uh, residual floor noise there. All right, let's move over to the uh, guitar solo. Let's uh, take a listen to this. So you can see I've got uh, my own reverb and delay already, um, but it was already recorded through the amp, so there's no need to add reverb or delay to it. Really all we're gonna do is add EQ to warm it up uh, and fatten up the bottom end a little bit just to make it a little thicker sounding, and then also uh, use some compression to, to thicken it up a bit as well. So what I'm gonna do with the EQ is I'm going to scoop out the low end but I am gonna boost up the mid-low end just to sort of make it a little fatter sounding. One thing I always do with guitars is I always band pass them. A lot of people have a tendency to uh, have a lot of this high-end content up here that ultimately just sounds fizzly and nasty sounding, especially once the song goes to mastering and you try to uh, beef up the high end, you end up making the guitars too bright and fizzly sounding. So it's just a little pet peeve of mine. Yeah, typically if I want to make the guitar brighter, I'll try between like the 1 and 2 and 3K range, uh, brightening it up there rather than trying to brighten it up in the high range here. So it really fattens it up. It's just kind of thin. Uh, it was just kind of thin before. Now let's move over to compression and add the compressor. I'm going to use a preset for this one. It's under guitars. Um, it's called Platinum Pickin' Guitar. It's a platinum uh, digital uh, setting. Um, really, I find myself jumping between digital, one of the VCAs, usually the classic VCA, and the studio FET for this sort of stuff. Um, and you'll find that even with the same setting, they all have sort of their same character. The platinum is pretty clean. The classic's softer and more subdued. And the FET is very, very punchy. Uh, so let's start with the Platinum Digital. So yeah, you can see the studio effect's very punchy. Let's go between uh, Digital and Classic VCA. I feel like the Classic VCA is just a touch warmer, um, but let's, uh, let me dial in some settings. I'm gonna pull the threshold down a bit, ratio up a bit, pull the input gain down a little bit just because the input signal is kind of loud. I am going to turn on the soft distortion and I'm going to blend this with the original signal with parallel compression uh, just a touch. Yeah, you'll see the, the FET's just way too punchy. The vintage, vintage FET's very, very punchy too. Uh, the vintage VCA is very sh like brittle sounding. The VCA, the studio VCA sounds sort of thin in the middle. Uh, I almost want to opt for the platinum digital here. Yeah, I, the, the distortion on that channel is just too, it's too much. Like, it sounds good on off, but 
on soft, it really gets too bright. I may just go with the digital on this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So let's uh, let's see what the guitar sounded like before. So here's the before. And then after. All right, cool. And the compressor actually is doing a pretty good job of actually bringing out the reverb during the gaps and at the end. So let's just uh, go ahead and listen to the whole, uh, the whole just the whole guitar solo with the synths and with everything else in. All right, cool. So that's uh, the rest of the instruments in our mix. In the next video, we will move on to uh, mixing the vocals, which there's a lot of stacked vocals in the song. So it'll probably take a couple videos to get through them all. We've also got to create some harmonies um, with flex pitch. So there's a lot to do on the vocals. So, so uh, that'll be coming up in the next few videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out CarneyMediaGroup.com where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at Patreon.com forward slash Music Tech Help Guy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.